What's going on guys? In one of our past videos, we designed one of the slowest and shortest flying discs possible. Well, today we have version 2.0. All right, let's go disc golf. So for our first design, we focused on having a tall rim that pushed as much air right up against it and had to shoot it straight up or straight down to slow it down as fast as possible. And we also made the top very concave. So it looked almost like a dog bowl. To, that is to help reduce the lift and get it to drop as fast as possible. Again reducing the distance even further. For version 2.0, we expanded upon those ideas further. We made it a little bit taller on the rim. I also messed around with the idea of making the rim itself concave, so that way when air slams into it, it not only has to go up and around it, it now even has to go backwards in both directions. I still kept this on a tiny bit of an angle this way, so that hopefully it is still slightly overstable I didn't want to make either of these discs super overstable and just to control the distance that way. So I'm hoping it's neutral to barely overstable because of that slight curve here or slight tapering. Because of the extra height, we're even able to get it a little more concave, so that should help further. And then our final design change that we made is we made the inside portion of the disc heavier and the rim itself lighter. So the opposite of what you'd want for like a normal distance driver to get as much distance as possible for just gyroscopes and generals, you want the weight on the outside. Well, to reduce distance, we put all that weight on the inside and reduced weight on the outside. So with those three changes, I'm hoping this goes even shorter than version one. Version one, my max through probably 50 good throws with it was 214 feet. I'm hoping this one goes even shorter. We're gonna find out, let's get into the testing. All right, we do have like 15 to 20 mile per hour winds out here today, I'm in a pretty, open course here, so I'm kind of picking spots that are closer to the wood line to reduce the, the wind as much as possible. So there's not a ton of wind standing right here. We're 180 feet from that basket, slightly uphill. We're gonna start out with version 1.0, rip it as hard as we can, see if we can even get it there. And then we'll go to version two for the first throw with it. All right, starting her off, version 1.0. Good throw, little too much any, dropped. Pretty good shot there. That's probably about 10, 10, 10 feet long of the basket. That might've been about 190. All right, first throw with version 2.0. So excited to see how this flies. It feels even weirder in the hand than version one. Let's see how it does. Okay, wait. <laughs> it was a little more nose up and a little higher than version 1.0, but it just went up and it fell fast. I'm very curious, but I don't think that's gonna be able to go as far at all as even the first one. All right, we got our first throw recap. Version 1.0 went right on 190 feet. Version 2.0, a legendary 134 feet. Absolutely insane. They weren't identical throws, so we'll have to we'll have to keep messing around with it and see how close they truly are. But I don't think this thing is getting a ton of distance. I think we can get it over 150, but I don't think it's crossing 200. We'll keep testing. We'll find out. For anyone that didn't watch the video of me making version 1.0, the whole idea for this was just to make the slowest possible disc that got the least amount of distance possible. I'm not good at touch shots, and I'm much better when I can throw faster and harder. So it was just a fun experiment for me to 3D print and mess around with the idea of designing a disc that solves that problem for me. Uh, I wanted to keep it as neutral as possible. As I said before, maybe slightly overstable. I also wanted to keep it pretty close to PDGA, like legal size-wise, that kind of stuff. I mean, obviously this, these shapes would not be PDGA legal, but I didn't want to get too ridiculous with it. Um, sticking to pretty similar diameters and um, very similar weight. I'm trying to keep them around 175. Uh, maybe 180 grams, but I don't want to just jack up the weight and then control the distance that way. So I'm trying to keep some sort of design parameters for myself. Uh, we're gonna do a close up here just to kind of show the differences between these two. It is pretty hilarious to see <laughs> the, the designs of these discs. I mean, these things look absolutely ridiculous, super concave tops on both of them, insane looking rims, especially on version 2.0 here. I mean, it just looks hilarious. It looks like a brick flying through the air, but we're gonna keep testing her out. So I came over to actually one of the more open holes here. There is a lot more wind. We got probably a 15 to 20 mile per hour left to right tailwind. I know I said I was gonna try and stay out of the wind, but I really wanna see if I can give these a slight ante and give them some height. That's probably gonna give them as much distance as possible. 
It's a 280 foot hole here. I know we're not making it there, but at least give us some sort of reference of how far these can go. Version 1.0 is up first. All right, height, height nanny, height nanny, let it drift in the wind. Got the height, got the ante. Pretty good. I mean, that's pretty solid. The wind did carry it some. I mean, that might be 200. It's hard to say. All right. Version 2.0, we want the same thing. We want good height, good ante. Let's see how she holds up. <laughs> didn't get quite enough of ante, but it's so weird to hold and throw. It's like I felt like I got a little ante on it, and it just ended up flat. They go up high because of the shape, and then they just fall right out of the sky. I mean, that's hilarious. I feel like I threw that really hard, and it went nowhere. All right, I just went and grabbed it. We actually ended up getting our new personal vest with version 1.0, 224 feet. I mean, the wind definitely assisted there, added quite a bit to it. This guy, we got to 173, so I'm actually pretty impressed with that. It wasn't a perfect throw, so I might be able to get a little far, farther, but I think the wind's adding about 15 to 20 feet onto both of these because last time I feel like I threw even better shots with version 1.0 and I wasn't getting it that far. I had maybe two or three throws over 200, so the wind's helping a little bit here, but still pretty awesome that even with the wind assist, this thing barely got over 170 feet. We got uh, how much left to the basket here? 109 feet. We're gonna try our first forehand with it, see if we can get a good upshot, pop her next to the basket. <laughs> uh, I gave it a little bit of height. I didn't give it any crazy height, and it's just, I know there's like a kind of a tailwind, but it dropped so quick. I mean, I feel like you have to aim like 30 feet up into the air and then just let it plop next to the basket. All right, 145 foot shot here. Let's see what we can do. What is very interesting is you have to throw these discs high to get them to get any distance at all. But I think something with the shape of it almost even makes them lift initially too. So even though they might be slightly nose up because I'm aiming high, like they lift a lot and get a lot of air quickly and then fall out of the sky. So like with how much headwind there is here, I feel like these are really gonna lift even if I don't try and throw it super high, but we're gonna see. I think we're gonna have to smash one here. Okay, okay. Distance wise, that is dead on. I think that's like a 15 foot putt. That was actually really good. This one, same thing. Might even have to try and put more oomph into it. Let's see if we can park it as well. Ah! <laughs> Whoa, I think I accidentally put a little bit of hyzer on that, but that thing like really pushed left quick. Interesting, definitely did not get there though. All right, 350 foot hole here, straight massive tailwind. We're gonna give these things all we got. We're gonna do a huge run up. The form's probably gonna be terrible, that's okay. We're gonna give them a bunch of height, try and give them some ante, absolute smashes, see how far we can get them. All right, version one. And that's pretty solid. <laughs> I feel like I got into that pretty good. It just kinda goes up, goes up, goes up, drops. All right, version two, I've realized, like version one, I was trying to put my thumb down here inside of it, but because this one's even deeper, I actually think it feels better to keep your thumb up on the top, where I think I can generate a little bit more spin that way. So we're gonna try a full rip with the thumb up on top. Ah! <laughs> I didn't get quite as much height on that one, but like, that one goes considerably shorter than the other one. All right, just because we have it, we're gonna try and smash a nuke here in the tailwind. Just absolutely nuke one, come on. We want high, we want a ton of ante. Oh, we got the height, we just didn't get enough ante out of it. Oh, man, I would have loved to see that with a little bit more ante and not hitting that tree. All right, let's see how far we smashed her. Not quite enough height, but... 188 with the tailwind. I mean, not horrible. I think with a perfect throw, a little more height. The tailwind assistance, we could probably get it 200. Without the tailwind, I bet she's probably 170 max. All right, version 1.0. 
245. The tailwind is definitely making a huge difference with 214 being my best about a week, two weeks ago when there wasn't wind. So definitely adding quite a bit of distance. So maybe this would even be like 150, 160 without the wind max. All right, wide open hole here, just under 500 feet. Not great wind. We have a left to right headwind. The left to right's helpful to kind of get that ante, maybe get a little bit more push to the right, kind of draw out that distance. Headwind's kind of hurting that. So we'll see, not super ideal. We're gonna try and smash both of the no distance discs. Then we'll try the nuke just for fun. All right, shot one, version one. Okay, it's getting the drift, it's getting the drift, and blop. <laughs> it's so weird, like I'm throwing them high and a little nose up, but it's like they literally just pick straight up. I know there's a little bit of a headwind, but like even when there wasn't headwind in the last video filming those, it just, they lift so high, get the height, lose spin, fall right out of the sky. All right, version two, we need a good one here. Oh, right on the pavement! Oh! Still probably 40 to 50 short compared to version one. All right, here's where our shots landed. Let's see how far they went. <laughs> 131 feet. This one's probably 165 if I had to guess. 166, one foot off, but Man, these things just don't go anywhere. Back to where we started. We're gonna throw a couple more fun shots here and close her out. 175, 180 foot shot here. Let's see if we can't park them. Not bad, pretty short. I tried to throw the hyzer to swing it a little bit, but kind of forgot they don't go far, so it's not gonna get there on hyzer. <laughs> We're gonna try, we're gonna try a super slight hyzer on this one. Absolutely rip it as hard as we can. See if we can even get her close. Oh, I early released her. I got the hyzer, but yeah, it don't matter. She wasn't getting there anyways. But either way, super fun video. Loved making those discs. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll think about making a third version, maybe doing some more tweaks, see if we can't even get it a little bit shorter. But either way, fun time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.